they have a security wall. It's a gated community. Now, these are things you don't associate with ordinary Kenyans. These are things that you associate with leafy suburbs. So, government intervention, government intervention took away almost half the cost of the project for ordinary Kenyans to own those homes. Why is that a bad thing? Now, because I want to finish this one, then if you take the 7.6 million, because, and now I'm introducing the housing fund, because that's the elephant in the room. If, if we left the private sector to deliver this house at 7.650, you got a number up or if then you go to a bank when the HIF, ama KCB, ama ISO zingine, you are lucky to get more than 10 years financing. The interest rate today for people they consider to have a good credit record is 15%. But remember, banks price risk. So if it's a normal hustler who's going there saying that I want a house, what, are they, do you think, what rate do you think they're going to get? If at all, the bank, the, the bank might even throw away those on the way, but for that, you, you don't, those engage or corridors there too. But let's take the average, 15%, very conservative. 7.65, if you pay a 10% deposit, and you pay interest at 15% for 10 years, is 111,000 every month. Now, let me just make a guess. I don't know, I don't know what, what, how much journalists earn. But uh, let, me, let me take a guess. That amount there, most of us in this room cannot afford. And probably they don't earn that kind of money, what it will cost you. But look at the alternative. I have lowered, I have taken out all the costs. It is $3 million, But I still want you to pay 10% deposit. Now, we financed Kenyans who own homes there at 7% versus 15. We gave them 25 years versus 10 to pay for those houses through a tenant purchase scheme in National Housing Corporation. The result is they are paying me 19,000. So good people. 19,000 versus 111. Now, most of you here I'm sure where you're paying rent, you're paying more than 19,000 or thereabout. So, how is 19,000 a bad thing? And why should we leave the market to dictate the terms so that you pay 111%? And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the solution. What is the solution? Our solution, and as I said, it's not a perfect solution, but it is a good plan. What is our solution? Our solution, first of all, starts on the basis of shared prosperity. Number two, our solution is based on Section 31 of the Employment Act, which says that every employer has a responsibility to provide housing to their people, by the way, and it says close to where they work. Let me tell you something. Park Road, where it is, majority of you will walk to work. You don't even need to get a car. It's close by. And even if it's KTN and Bamako Mombasa Road, Unenge Express Wikidogo, Unenge Apo, Uko Job from Park Road. And Zingine Mbazo Tunajenga. So, today, even if your employer is giving you a house allowance, tell me, if we leave it to the market, how much is it going to cost you? 111,000. It means majority of you will not qualify. You'll never get a house. Your alternative is a circle model, which has done a lot for many Kenyans. But I know a thing or two about circle model and housing. Because me, I was born in an informal settlement in Nakuru, Bondeni. That's where I was born. So, my father was a civil servant, was earning 6,500 shillings. He joined the circle called Nguatanero. 
We went and bought land, just like everybody else. We got a quarter of an acre. And we started the home ownership journey. Nine years later, by the time my dad was resting, was passing away, we had never finished building that house. That is the story of many Kenyans. Eventually, you will, own, you will own it, but after nine years. So I want to ask you another question. What is so wrong with me assisting you to own a home in the next two years versus nine years? Is that a bad thing? If it's not a bad thing, then why don't we come and say, yo plan yako mzuri, lakini, hapa hivi, twende hivi. So, Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what our solution is. In very simple terms, our solution is not a solution that is just crazy. We thought about. We went to Benchmark. We went to Singapore. We went to Mexico. We went to Brazil. We went to Nigeria. We went to China. Many different places. And some of them we went to Benchmark so that we know how not to do it. Because some of them, they have failed. What did they do? They said, let's save together. And that is a principle that most of us understand here because you belong to a chama somewhere or a sako somewhere. So let's save together. And they did. And they told the employer, you save this, the employee will save that. Number two, they said, once we pull this money together and it is driven by law, because I know most of you are saying, where is Wifanya Ikitikwe voluntary? You see, when it is driven by law, if I'm going to get a billion a month, it means I can confidently go out there and call investors and tell them, for as long as that law is there, three years from now, I'll still be collecting the billion. So let me tell you in simple terms. You know today something called fuel levy. We all pay fuel levy today if you're driving. Fuel levy is the one that has enabled us to build all these roads you're seeing here. Why? Because we've gone to the market and we told the market, here is the history. There is this Kalevi here. We are collecting so much and you look after the last 10 years, there has been a, an increase. So give us a lot of money today. We build those roads, but in the next 15 years, we will still be paying that fuel levy and we'll be able to pay you out. If we didn't have that, guess what is going to happen? What was going to happen was... They will, they will tell us, no, you can't afford it. Our housing fund works in the same way. It is a mandatory contribution by employer and employee. And as Hussein has said, we have capped it at 2,500. So the highest earning Kenyan will only pay 2,500 shillings. Majority of Kenyans will pay 1,000 and below. That's number one. But then we pull our money together. And I have not even brought in the people who are going to pay voluntarily. Then what happens? We pay into this fund. Then, as a country, we are able to go out there to the market and we call investors and we tell them, the Kenyan government is providing land at no cost, like I have done in Park Road, for Kenyans to own homes. The Kenyan government is committed to bring infrastructure to that site. The Kenyan government is prepared to take away all these costs of approval all I want you to do is bring your money, build those houses en mass. That's important. Build those houses en mass, and then when you finish building those houses, give me the keys, I pay you, you go. If I don't have the housing fund, they will ask me, how will you fund me when I finished in three years' time? That's why you need certainty of cash flows every month coming in into this fund so that we can get as many investors, which is foreign money that is coming in here, and also the domestic money that we have so that we build those houses. So what I forget about what they're talking about, it's a tax. And let me address that part. Good people, you all pay taxes today because you're employed, so you're paying payroll tax. I pay payroll tax. I don't know how many of you have been to Moyale here. But do you know we have a road that goes all the way to Moyale. That road was built using your taxes. But you have no direct benefit from that money because you may never ever go to Moyale.
That is what tax is. But what is a saving? What is this housing fund contribution? Housing fund conveys to you or confers you a direct right. It's a direct right to you. Why? Because you will either get an affordable unit, which is highly subsidized, or after seven years, if you don't want it, we give you back your money plus your return. And now, as I wind up, you are all employed here. So, <laughs> if I left, let's assume all of us here average, we're going to pay a thousand shillings. If you're paying a thousand shillings, and you took that 1,000 shillings and you put it in a fixed deposit in a bank today. How much return do you think you're going to get? 70 shillings after one year. This is 7%. That's how much you're going to get. But by taking that 1,000 shillings and putting it in the housing fund, what are you getting? Because a lot of people are also talking about return. What are you getting? As an employee, first of all, you get 100% return on day one. You ask me, Hinga na smoke kitu. You know, Nini, amulewi hii maneno. The minute you put your money in the housing fund, the employer contributes for you another thousand. So on day one, your one thousand in Azar to another thousand. Nani pesa yako? How can that be a bad thing? Sasa, unless ni Shylock, uko inje. Where can you get a hundred percent return? So for employees, to be quite honest, this is a, what I call a sweetheart deal. It is a good deal. It is a very good deal. Now, when you get the house, I am also helping you, as I said, you don't pay stamp duties if you're a first-time homeowner. And as you pay up to 300,000 a year interest, I give you back as mortgage relief. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have set the scene. We know where we are right now. We know where we want to go. And by the way, let me just say one more thing. Or two more things quickly. One, the rules of this chama of ours, this national circle, are one ID, one house. One ID, one house. You cannot buy more than one unit. So, you cannot. It is one ID, one house. Number two, for even the people who are making a lot of noise, because they are there and some of them have genuine issues, they say, why are you talking to me about a house? I already own one or I'm already paying for one. Now, I'm assuming those are parents. And those parents perhaps are still living with their kids. Grown-up kids, 27, 28 years, are still living with their parents. Why? Because what is the alternative rental market out there? How much can that young man young lady who is just starting life, how much rent can they pay? If there is no affordable rental, they end up in pipeline where we call them tenements. I'm a Zimmerman. So they opt to stay with their children at home. To them, I am telling them, that money that you're contributing, you can confer it to your child. Even the child who is like my daughter, my firstborn daughter turned 15 last week, I can confer that benefit to her so that by the time she gets to 18, she can have a unit. Can you imagine, good people, that your parents, the first thing as you got into the job market, they gave you a unit. That is how we are able to do it on this particular program. Hussein, have I done justice? No. Actually, when I saw it, I think I want to. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll start with the um, Good afternoon. My name is Peter Mburu. Um, I have several questions. And I limit them. Have yes, yeah. I'll try and limit them. Yeah. But I know you said you have a lot of time. So. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Easier to answer. Yeah, first, it's regarding with data, the data that you are providing us with. Uh, Hussein, you tell us that we have a deficit of 2 million housing units. Um, I don't know whether the government is aware that the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics last year released a report on housing status in Kenya, 
and according to KNBS, the deficit is 8.8 .8 million housing units. So I'd like to know where State House is getting its data from and why it's differing from KNBS, which is essentially the national government, you know, data, data institution. Um, and if so, if really by 2019 the deficit was 8.8 .8 million, and State House today is telling us that the deficit is 2 million, if really Kenyans have managed to construct houses between 2019 and today, 6 million housing units without the fund, why then force them to fill up the 2 million? But it's not the deficit. Yeah, that is a deficit, okay. according to KNBS. So that is my first question. Of houses or affordable houses? Is the difference? No, the, the deficit so in all houses. Affordable, affordable houses. All houses in the country, the deficit. Um, my second question will be to P.S. Hinga. I know you had an interview, I think, last week or two weeks ago, where you were making a statement that with an assurance that you will have $9 billion every month, mm. you can walk out to any part of the country and order that there is construction without regard to what the developer thinks. And I'm just wondering where is due diligence lying here so that we don't, up with, we don't end up with a case where we are building so many houses yet nobody will buy. Uh, this program really assures developers that they will get market for their houses, but then uh, where is the assurance that these houses will be bought by the people so that we don't end up with so many uh, useless projects? Um, my third and second last question, why was it difficult to capacity build the State Department for Housing and the National Housing Corporation to undertake these projects as opposed to going to, to private developers? Uh, my last question, um, it's a question, where is the end game? What if these houses lack somebody to buy? Or what if over the 30-year or 20-year period that you're setting as the period for repayment, mm. someone fails along the way? What happens in that case? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Piers and Hussein. This is Moses Meso from KBC, Moses. Uh, Radio Ingo, Saluya, Vernacular Station. My issue here is uh, who qualifies for those houses? Because you remember the previous beneficiary for the affordable housing and social housing, they rented them. People are given houses, they bought houses. At the end of the day, they rented those houses. Do they really qualify? for those houses. Then my issue here is the policies that we are going to put across to ensure that those houses go to the right uh, people. Because people who acquire those houses must stay in those houses. But people are acquiring them and renting them to other people. Then look at the 3% deduction. We already have people who are retiring in less than two years. Are they going to be deducted? Then also there are those who are retiring and they have already acquired their own houses. Okay. How are you going to protect from such like people? Thank you very much. You. Okay. Good afternoon. Business reporter with Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, Regina. Sorry, who? Regina Manyara. From? KBC. KBC. Business. Now, um, what happens to those who have already onboarded in contributing to the Bomayetu platform? This was also under the previous regime, under the Big Four agenda. Secondly, uh, what incentives then are you offering the informal sector and how will you rope in the informal sector to contribute to this national fund? Thirdly, with the rate of construction going on, you know, the existing projects, we've been tracking what has been happening under the Big Four agenda. And also with the, you know, the report for um, the Kenya Bureau of Statistics, they are indicating that we know we are in short supply against high demand as far as urban population and settlement is concerned. You've mentioned the incentives that you have given to the manufacturing sector in passing, you know, to just uh, give them land, infrastructure, and, sh and such. But when we're talking about affordable housing, we're looking at the cost of inputs, and this is raw materials. That has been um, a bane in as far as construction and building is concerned. Have you factored in in this particular proposal? Thank you. Yeah, many Kenyans are struggling with economically, and uh, the issue is, is this the priority for the government to put in place instead of waiting maybe the economy to be at least somewhere 
where Kenyans can be affordable. Uh, the second question is, uh, sorry, no, we can hear you. We can hear you. So the, the other que the, the concern with Kenyans is, uh, why can't government make affordable the building materials for Kenyans to build their houses on their own, on their own instead of let, making sure that they, they contribute 3% to build? Why don't you make the building materials cheaper for every Kenyan to build his or her own house? Okay. Finally, the lady, then we'll do another one. My name is Flora Limuke from TV47. My first question is, um, the housing fund has been met with a lot of public resistance. So is there a plan to perhaps put up like a government portal where Kenyans can assess the project status and also the performance report over time? And also, how do you then intend to broaden the contributor space, uh, bearing in mind that this may raise housing challenges for people at the bottom of the pyramid, and this is bottom-up uh, economic model uh, government. So how do you then uh, intend to broaden the contributor space or tax base? Right. Okay, uh, right. There, very, very, very quickly. I think Hussein answered the, uh, the question about the, the, the data. Now, um, nine billion that you're going to construct and you're saying that you're going to, take, to have it in every part of the country is uh, is the pooling of fund. Now, as we speak right now, and we are going to upload this information, uh, the la last question, Bomayangu is a marketplace where you need to go. Uh, there is a lot of information and we are continuously uploading. What you're going to find as we speak right now, I have 524 parcels of land that I have identified in major towns all over the country. Number two, we conducted housing service. We have conducted housing survey. We just come from a census as well which is part of the data that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are talking about. And we asked, remember in the census, there were so many questions we asked you about uh, housing. How many people want to own, how many people want, uh, and where. Number three, on Bomayangu Poto, and I want to say, please, start the journey today, it's star 832 hash. When you get to Bomayangu, you choose where you want a house. That's one of the questions we ask you. Where do you want to own a home? You choose. And that also advises. So it's not just going to be blind undertaking. However, we are starting a program where we are putting 200 units in every constituency. And these 200 units will be taken because I can promise you, even if you don't think there is demand in Marral or in Karachonyo or in Nyansiongo, in Nyamira, we know because, first of all, government is an employer. We have got so many people in there. And, there is, and then, so, so that is, that is, so we're not going to create uh, we're not just going to do this thing carelessly, like just build, and then uh, without uh, due diligence, as you said. Uh, what is the end game? That, like, if you lack someone to buy. Actually, if you, if you lack someone to buy, and I highly doubt you, you're, sorry, you're going to have that. Sorry, I am very normally okay. animated. <laughs> this phone is the one which is in danger. <laughs> uh, if, if, you, if you do that, Guess what? We have got people who are providing public service, police, defense, NYS, and all those people. They, we have got, and they are in every part of the country. They, you have got firefighters, you have got all those people that you need to house in some of those places, and they, are, they will still be repaying uh, every month. So the, the houses will be taken up. Moses KBC, who qualifies? Anybody can qualify. But just like your circle and other circles, you have got rules of engagement. What are the rules? The rules are that there is a prioritization. If one of the questions we ask you in the Bomayangu is, are you a first-time homeowner? If you don't have a home, and Hussein here has a home, and you are going for the same unit, we will prioritize you who doesn't have a home. We even go further and say, how do we incentivize young people, so age, to own a home? We also say if you have disability or, or you're able-bodied differently, if you tell us, because that's one of the questions that we ask you, we prioritize you so that you choose, first of all, do you want to go on the ground floor? All that information is available on Bomayangu. The second question from Moses is a very good question about the policies on the issue of uh, 
owner occupier. I can tell you, when you sign the contract, those people that are living in Park Road, they signed a contract that says, I will live on that house. Okay? But tell me, how do you police enterprise? How do you police somebody who has been offered, because this is actually what is happening in Park Road, that three-bedroom where they are paying 19000 to us, they are getting rent of 55000 If we stop and try to force people now to, uh, to do that, we will have lost the plan. First of all, let me help you get a home. Okay? The only thing I can tell you in the policy, you cannot buy two. And the other thing is, you can't sell that unit until seven years. Because that unit is so subsidized. If I allowed you to sell, what are you going to do today? You buy 3 million, you sell it for 7.6. See the evil? You then you buy another two. So we have those safeguards under the housing fund. Uh, Moses, if you're retiring, if you read the regula the, uh, the whatever, the fine, what is in the finance bill, it says you get back your money at the earlier of retiring, death, or seven years. So whichever comes first, you're going to get back your money. So if you retire in two years' time, you get back your money, the whatever you've saved, okay, because it is your money. Uh, Regina, uh, what happens to those who are already onboarded? We have transitioned from telecom platform to e-citizen, and we transitioned every one of them. So your money is still there. In fact, as a matter of fact, those people that I have saved, I have 1.8 billion of their money. And when you go to star 832 hash, you can be able to find out there is a place where you say, what is my balance? You will be able to see it. So your money is still there. What incentives to informal sector? The informal sector indeed get additional incentives. So with the Bomayangu, with the housing fund, I will, we will finance Kenyans at 5% as Hussein said. We will finance Kenyans for 30, up to 30 years. No, it's so, some of you are saying 30 years that you're going to get stuck with 30 years. If you pay it in five years, there's no penalty. But we will enable you to pay based on the size of your pocket. For the informal sector, in, informal settlements, first of all, the interest rate is 3, 3%. And those numbers are not thumbsack. We have worked backwards. How can I be able to help a Kenyan to pay 5,000 shillings? So we start from the answer, and then you go back to the unknown, and we work it out. Okay? The people who work in the informal sector are allowed to save through the voluntary scheme. So the housing fund has two schemes. It has the mandatory and it has the voluntary. But the one thing that I want, and it's a good question, is that you will never own a home unless you have registered on Bomayangu and you are contributing, whether mandatory or voluntary. So that's very important. Those are some of the rules because we don't want you're contributing for people who are not contributing, and then they get a house. They must contribute whatever the amount is. And by the way, they are contributing more than us. I have a group of Matatu stage workers. Those are touts and drivers that have come together and given me an MOU, and they say, should these houses start construction all over the country, we are going to be saving 300 shillings a day. I have it on me. Because they don't have another chance of getting a home elsewhere. Vincent. Uh, have I finished Regina's question? Yeah. Okay. The cost, the cost of construction. First of all, one of the most painful costs in construction is VAT. Because VAT is real for our industry. And I'm not going to get technical. But we have written off VAT. So that house, that affordable house in Park Road, there was no VAT on the cement. No VAT on the steel. And that's how we were able to drive it down. There are other incentives. Like if you import any material, there are incentives. There, there is a, when you use Kenya Railways, the SGR, you don't pay. The, the railway development levy is different from other people carrying materials and so on and so forth. Vincent Afande. Good question. And you will introduce a very important topic about the economics. Okay? We all know what is happening. There is a global crisis and the incomes have shrunk and there is real pain. And sometimes, and I know, it looks like we are insensitive uh, uh, to, 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 to the people. But, good people, how do you get out of a global economic crisis? One of the ways to do it is to invest in yourselves.
you must create a consumptive demand. All right? A consumptive demand. And that's why we are saying, if we build these 200,000 homes, how many new jobs are we going to bring into the economy? That's number one. Can you imagine how many doors are we going to construct? Those doors will be constructed by Kenya because one of the policies, and someone is asking about the policy, we will not buy doors from China. We will not import doors from India or Windows. There are 69 items that will be produced here. And actually, if you are in Mwingi, they will have to be produced in Mwingi because we want to create local jobs, not jobs in Nairobi. Okay? And now think about housing as a long supply chain. So it is actually good economics. And what we have said is, what is it that we can be able to contribute together so that we create these stimulus into the economy and incomes are going to rise and more jobs are going to be created and we attract foreigners to come and bring in the dollars that we need. You know the dollars, are, we have a shortage of dollars. But I have got over 200 investors and all they are saying is, if you give me an off-take plan, because I don't believe in your story. Your story is a very emotional story about Wanjiko owning a home, about the Juakali artisan owning a home, Ashushaina owning a home. But hey, my money is not emotional. All right? So me, I just want to know that I'll get paid. And how do you guarantee that they'll get paid? You can tell them, if you tell them that you're going to get paid, it becomes a government guarantee, which is as good as debt. And you know what is going on, the conversation we're having about debt in our country. So we are saying these cash flows that we have pulled together, and they are driven by a law, but are not bankrupting people because we are saying it is maximum of 2,500. Average Kenyan will pay 1,000. You tell me today, how many houses can you be able to get for 1,000 shillings? So this 1,000 shillings, you're taking it out of this pocket and you're putting it into this pocket. You're not 1,000 shillings richer or poorer. The only difference is that in this pocket, you can only earn 7% if you put it in or whatever. In this pocket, you can walk away with a house. Whereby, just like the, the gentleman from KBC has said, that the person now is getting rent at 55000 and you're paying nineteen. The hustler now can be able to do that. Okay. So, and it's a very good question and I'm sure a question that we need to talk about. Building materials. You know... We, we are providing building materials, especially in the rural areas. So if you want to go build your own home in the rural areas, come to us. We have housing directories in every county. We'll give you even plans to go build your own home. But even this housing fund, we will finance you still. So providing building materials, all it helps us to do, for example, in Kisi, because they make those blocks, but they use firewood to burn those bricks. We have given them machines called hydroform machines interlocking soil block machines so that now they press those machines but we have still not answered the question how will they finance so the housing fund addresses both flora tv 47 i think i've answered the question about the portal okay so there is a portal the portal bomayangu please and it is still under construction so there are some places you will go and you see you say it is coming up even diaspora if those of us who will watch this from diaspora, there is a diaspora tab for you. There is, it is a marketplace for everybody. So we have aggregated buyers. I have over 350 Kenyans today that have registered. And, uh, and since we started this conversation, we are getting almost 5,000 every other day registering. Number two, if you're a developer, you also go on Bomayangu. You list your project so that you don't have to leave there and come to the office and ask, Hinga, you just go click and you see where the developments are coming up. And then the choice is yours. Where do you want that home? And you tell us. Uh, and I think the question about the contributors at the bottom, in terms of broadening. Now, let me tell you what is going to happen. You see, why I am struggling, or why we are struggling with this housing fund, uh, because of three things. One, trust deficit. And I know that question is coming up. It's about trust deficit. So this program, we must put in enough safeguards so that we can be able to win the trust. Number two is believability. And that's why we had to do the pilot. Because instead of Hinga talking to you, I want you to go and interview the shoe shiner. I have eight touts who are homeowners in Park Road. Go interview them. Why? Because now it starts to become real. 
it's not that hinga is piki piki ponki anasema huyu ni wangu ama hinga amepata pesa kidogo hapa hivi anasema i have no powers to allocate those houses so it is important that for the people who are in the informal the minute they see that there is trust and they need the homes even more because they are the ones who are in the slums they are the ones who are in the tenements they will actually out contribute us for two reasons a there are many because there are about 18 million of them versus three those who are in the formal two they want to save as much like kigadi and his team from the matatu they're saving 300 shillings a day you you are saying you save a thousand and i think that is how we are going to broaden this thing and you will see we will be able to transform this country because we came collectively together you people belong to us why do we come together it's because there is a power of pooling money thank you My name is Chimutai Goen from Citizen TV, and I have um, maybe about three questions. One would be, the social housing program has been used by many developed nations, and for instance, the United States, in New York, Harlem, and Brooklyn, uh, there was construction of uh, various you know, housing units, but the government also went in to have a subsidized rate that was available for rentals. Has the government considered that as opposed to Uh, the forceful quote and quote uh, deduction for you to be a homeowner. Um, there, was, there was about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, about two billion shillings that was collected in the previous, uh, uh, from 2018 when there was a 1.5% uh, deduction, but not mandatory, I'm, I'm, I'm certain. But um, where did that money go to? How many units were constructed out of that money? And for this administration and what has so far been launched? How many of those units are, what is the progress? And if somebody is to opt in, if the finance bill sails through um, and one is opting in for that, uh, how soon can one uh, get that? Because the question that many are raising is, if it is housing units for those that are perceived to be living in indecent uh, areas or you know, informal settlements, if my salary is being deducted, am I top on the list in getting that house? Thank you. My name is Brian Mushiri from NTV. Mine is uh, maybe just to understand the financial accounting system because late last year in my senior uh, Chemotai actually reported on it and we also reported on it that there was a challenge with the, the recent project that has just been uh, uh, launched and uh, groundbreaking began in South Sea. Um, uh, Lab Fund is largely involved in that and we had two companies, um, uh, the first one being CRJEA that was awarded the tender to actually um, start the construction of that housing project and um, MS Milcon Limited that is also part and was actually passed by the tender committee in that particular uh, project and uh, this uh, the, the latter actually came in with uh, with uh, 14 billion shillings and uh, the, the one that was given the tender went in at 16 billion shillings an internal whistleblower came in we had um, the, uh, the ethics and anti uh, ESCC rather actually acknowledge um, this um, uh, this letter by this internal whistleblower. So, um, from where you sit, are you aware of this situation? And as a Kenyan whose money is quote unquote being played around with, um, what am I? What is my uh, security when it when it comes to this? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, Jimmy Bogo from KTN. I have a couple of questions. Uh, Bona PS, when we were having this conversation around four years ago uh, on the issue of 1.5 uh, levy, one of the things that you mentioned is that uh, the, the alternative would have been going out to the market and getting about 1.8 trillion. In, as we speak now, if we were to go back to the market, how much would it have cost to achieve this, uh, these projects? Number two, uh, there's a time I remember, again, at one of the functions, you spoke about regulating Uh, rental charges in the country to be able to sort of uh, remove that pressure in terms of uh, get a number of people who can pay a little more away from the slums. How far are you with us? Uh, I, I, have you gone with that? The, uh, now, the, the, the next question is on the issue of the seven years. Now, what happens after seven years? I've been contributing for seven years. I want to get my money out. What happens after that? Do I still get uh, to contribute afresh? And uh, if it's Again, we've seen this 
this trend where you have been contributing, for instance, NSSF, but then when you go to, get, uh, to collect your money, it becomes another nightmare because of the bureaucracy in government and also <coughs> the status of the housing market. A lot of developers are saying, just make the market, um, uh, up, make it a bit sustainable for us. Make sure that uh, you zero rate, uh, let's say, some of these materials and we'll be able to put out those affordable housing. So what's happening around that? My name is Elvis Omondi from Biblia Usema Broadcasting and... Uh, from? Biblia Usema Broadcasting. Biblia. Yes. I have two questions. Uh, one pertaining to the, the closest we have to affordable housing uh, units is uh, high-rise near Kibra. And uh, when you look at high-rise, uh, the most pros prospering business, apart from food, is uh, water and honey suckers. This is because the infrastructure there was not uh, considered. And most of the people who would want to buy these house, affordable housing units are questioning, will I buy this unit and live in a place where I still buy water to flush my toilet? Or where I still have to pay service charge to get my toilet, you know, honey suckers to get out there? And uh, my second question is on the seven years. You've explained a lot uh, the nitty gritty of this project, but I still don't understand. What is the science behind seven years? Why not eight? Why not three? What is the science behind these seven years? Let's give another person a chance uh, behind there, then we, we answer those things. Good afternoon. My name is Fred Muli, Sango FM, Kamba Ready Station. I have only one question. Sorry, Muli from? Sango FM. Sango. Yes. Sango. With the kind of resistance the project is getting from uh, the citizens and also from the other uh, side of political view, does the government have any plans to sensitize on the same project? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, very good questions. Chumtai, um, social housing, New York, subsidized for rental. Um, our plan, 91% of Kenyans in Nairobi, they rent today, 91%. That's our statistic our, we, um, in 2017, so I'm sure it's probably more. Our plan is to subsidize the rent, but through a rent-to-own structure. Okay? That is our plan, and that is why we are saying you will get a home for 5,000 shillings. You will get a home for 10,000 shillings under the affordable housing program at 15,000 shillings. If you're in the social housing, you will pay 2,500 for one roomed house. You will pay 4,500 for a two roomed house and you will pay 6,500 for a three roomed house. But that house you will rent and you will own. The question that we get is, why own? And we ask the question, do Kenyans rent because they like to rent or they rent because they cannot afford to own? And as I said, it's a dialogue, and I'm sure you have the answer. Two billion. First of all, the 1.5 we never collected. So that's the first fact. The two billion that uh, was saved slightly less, that's what I talked about, the 1.8 billion, is still in our bank account at KCB. It is still available. And the people who saved there, because the criteria for allocation, because I'm surprised nobody has asked, it is what we call fast past the gate. What is fast past the gate? One, you must pay, you must have raised 10% deposit for that unit. Number two, there is... You, you must go to Bomayangu and you must fill in. There's certain information that we need. And luckily with the e-citizen, I don't need to ask for your marriage certificate. I don't need to ask for your birth certificate because all those things we now are going to integrate uh, with them. So you just register and then you start saving. Star 823 hash. That is the beginning of that journey. So those who have that two, point, 2 billion, and it is their money, that is voluntary. Okay, majority of them have said, I don't want to take that money out because now that I see Starehe is coming up, I want to be fast 
past the gate. Okay? What has been launched? We can provide you uh, through, I'm sure you through your WhatsApp group, we can be able to provide you with, a, with an update. But uh, as Hussein said, it's 36 years. 36,000. 36, that is under construction. Because please, let's understand. Construction takes time. So even when we say 200,000, we are saying we will start 200,000 projects, units. Okay? Not fi so by the time you start saying you're finishing, maybe give us a headroom of about two, three years. So now you've, the first 200 are coming up, and then thereafter you can say there is consistent coming in. But when you're starting, you're starting from a base of zero, you have to build them. And because a lot of people, they, you know, the, 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 the same friends of ours who you invite there, they like to take cheap shots. That our can hang out a jenga nyumba in one day. <laughs> um, what is it? How can I? Uh, how soon can I get that? The list. Huh? Yes. There is construction that is already going on. So already, please, and we are telling you, just start the journey today. Go and. Star 832 hash, start saving your money, and as soon as those units are complete, and continue saving. And remember, the 1,000 is the minimum, or the 2,500, that's the minimum. The more you save, the more it means when the deposit is required, you will have it. So we're just saying, put the Kidogo Ile amount, which is our off-take plan, but please save as much as possible. Can you imagine down, Jimogilia, that's all. Mushiri, NTV, I have no clue about what you've spoken about. That is a private project. Uh, I do not have any information I've heard from you uh, for the first time. So allow me not to comment on something that I have no idea about. Thank you. Jim Bogo, uh, I know you interviewed me once. I think you were at K24 then. Ah, good. KICC. Um, the... In the Jubilee government, our plan was 500,000 homes at an average of about 2 million plus. It was coming to that 1.4 trillion shillings. Now, with Kenya Kwanzaa, our plan is a million units in the next five years. So just double that and add a little bit of a factor. Because when we were doing that, steel was still very low. Now it has gone up. Uh, but, but, but you're doing it via PPP. So it is, we're not borrowing the money. We're not borrowing the money. We are doing what you do every other place. We changa, and we buy, we build these houses, that we, and we get other people to bring their money to build. Please don't forget about that, because this will attract foreign money to come into this country. And please, you don't need to be an economist to understand this. This is common sense economics. Ingine ni story too. Regulating rental charges. There is a landlord and tenants bill that is before parliament. It was sent back out. It addresses some of these issues about uh, uh, the regulation uh, of tenants. So it is still a bill and we hope because now there is goodwill, it's one of the bills that we can be able to get completed. Seven years. Very good question. What happens? You see, if you have not retired, seven years is an event where you can opt to take out your money. You can opt to transfer that money to your pension. You can opt to transfer that money to your kijana or your mschana. You can even bequeath it to your house help because It is absolutely your money. But if you have not yet retired, you continue. But you have an exit at that point. Okay. Uh, so you contribute afresh. Collection is an issue. Uh, okay, I think you asked uh, about um, when when it comes to yes. You collect okay, yes, 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 collect, collect collection of your money. So you want to exit. So first of all, let me let's put some context into place. Number one, it is our desire that you get a unit as opposed to getting that money back. Why? Because even if you own a home today, as I said, and you get a unit that is 60% discounted, it is good investment decision. 
So, but if you have to take it out, let me put context to you. 2,500 a month in seven years is only 210,000. That's what I need to pay you in seven years. 210,000. So it's not millions that you'll have saved. It's 210. For average Kenyan who is going to be contributing 1,000 shillings and below, that is 84,000. Okay? So, and that's why we are saying let's put context. You see, 210 that you want to take out in that place versus getting a unit that is 60% subsidized. The idea is to incentivize you to get it. But however, if you want to get it out, you will get out your portion. The employer portion stays in. Because the employer portion is the one that protects the capital of the fund. So that if now there are obligations for the fund, we are supposed to keep those, uh, that kind of money. But after 14 years, you can now exit your employer portion as well, or if you die. So, but if you die or retire, you get both. The employer portion and your, po uh, and your portion. But if you want to exit, at the very least, I give you back what you've saved. Uh, status zero rate. What is this? What do you ask about zero rate? Yeah, so we have zero rated the VAT. That's the most expensive uh, issue uh, that we have uh, because uh, VAT in our sector is, uh, is, a, is a real cost. And as I said, our, uh, railway development levy, income, uh, in, in, uh, what do you call this? Import, declaration, whatever, is also lower. And, uh, and also, um, you, you, when, for the developer, and maybe some of you are developers, you develop 100 units and below, you pay tax at 15% as opposed to 30%. Elvis... Um, so closest to uh, AHP is high rise. Eh? That's, yeah, that's what you're saying. But I say no. The closest to AHP is Park Road. Please. I have just given you the details about Park Road. Apple high rise, Hawana Fiber, Uko Dani. Uko Park Road. Uyo Shusha ina anaishi mali kuna park. Kuna CCTV. Akona maji ndani ya nyumba. They have boreholes. Plus, they have electricity, they have emergency generator. My friend, you don't associate those things, amenities, with uh, those kind of houses. So please, let's use the right base to compare. And you, you put a very good point, which I forgot to say. You will pay service charge. Let me tell you, service charge is important because that is your house. You see, the conversation is owners versus renting. That house, you need to take care of it. So service, you will form your own body corporate. Iyo, Park Road body corporate, Ile Ngine, Sarehe body corporate. Nyinyi wenyewe, you will have to pay service charge so that you, I mean, you are able to maintain those lifts. Otherwise, my friend, utaenda 18 floors. Muli, spot on. The resistance. And let me tell you, and that is why I am so happy that we are having this a conversation with yourselves. And after this, we are hitting the ground so hard because we believe. And you can see that this thing is, this is a very difficult job, by the way, let me tell you. It's very difficult. To get this thing off the ground is very difficult. You must be a believer in this thing. And our president is a believer in this. That's why his DNA is housing. It's because he knows what we need to do. But let me tell you, we have a good product. What I have shown you here in this detail this is a good product where you are told instead of paying 7.6, pay 3. Instead of paying 15% interest, pay 5. Instead of paying 10 years and you pay 111,000, pay eh? 19,000. It is a good plan. Our biggest challenge, and this is where, because you are Kenyans too, and I know majority of you here, and I wish that you in the fourth estate could be the first people that buy these houses because you become better evangelists on our behalf. And you're Kenyans too. So let me tell you what we need. We need to do is, yes, please, let's disagree where we have to disagree. But let's not beat this thing so hard that you want to, make, to have it fail. Because if it fails, we have not sorted out the economics of the country. We have not sorted out the housing issue. 
we have not said, sorted out the urbanization issue. So this is a conversation that we should be able to look at each other in the eyes and say, ah, what are you talking about? Shilingi elf moja. Yo, mimi ni mekubali. Wacha nieke yo elf moja. If you're going to guarantee me, we're going to stop these slums from coming up. If I'm going to have a decent home. So, our biggest challenge as government, wacha ni wambia secret, is that there's so many good things that we do. We have no good capacity to be able to tell the public about it. And so we get defined by the bad ones. Ile sukari sijui ilikuwa sijui ilifanya nini. Sayi watu wengi wanafikiri mambo ya sukari. Ambayo sijui ilikuwa ime nini. That's what you think. Government is synonymous to scandals. But there's so many good things that we are doing. And that's why, please, if you believe the plan is good, we want you to also become our ambassadors. We are going to do serious public participation everywhere in this country, in every channel, so that the resistance can go down. After that interview on Spice FM, I can tell you, a lot of people said, ah, I understand. After Hussein said it's 2,500, pressure ikakuja chini. When the president explained to the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs yesterday, it is only 2,500 maximum. Pressure ikaisha kwa sababu walikona nani watakato 300,000. So let's communicate and assist us and accuracy. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll just take two more questions from those who haven't spoken. My name is Ezra, Ngemi FM, KBC. I want to get the simple mathematics about the housing development fund. Eh? If you are planning to build 200,000 houses per year, each house may require 2.5 million. Eh? Uh, if you translate this, it will be less than 500 billion per year. How are you able to raise the uh, surplus amount? Eh? Then, there's the issue of the seven year when you want to opt out for the uh, housing development fund. Eh? Uh, in each fund, there must be some interest. Eh? The interest rate is very silent. I've not heard you say, I'll get my 210% the loan number. Can you please clarify about that? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Lawrence Nyando from Radio Omini. Uh, my question I'll direct you to Buena Hussein, not the PS. As we can see, the government is really trying to work out and help Kenyans. But why should you prioritize on the issue of housing now while you have other issues that are really affecting Kenyans? Let's talk about health issue. We have many youths who are really unemployed in the country. And the, uh, also the taxation is really high. Why do you want to provide houses to the people who are unemployed and people who have health issues and also the health sector in the country is really not okay? Thank you. My name is Festa Zamimo from Radio Mayenga KBC. From? Radio Mayenga KBC. Okay. Uh, my first, I have three questions. One, what factors did the government consider to arrive at 3%? And I would treat this more or less like uh, straight deductions. Uh, we have institutions or companies or government uh, departments that do not remit uh, straight deductions in time. So you target to raise one billion every month, and there are so many institutions that may not comply with this, what will the government do in that? Second question is on, how will the tightening challenges at the Ministry of Land be addressed to ensure speedy sectional tightening of the paid units in this program? And the final question, what coordination opportunities exist between State Department of Housing and Urban Development and National Housing Corporation in terms of decision making and management of the housing fund and its implementation. Thank you. My name is Graham Kajilo from the Standard. Sorry, Gra Graham Kajilo from the Standard. Um, I would like to understand what effect will this fund have in the expansion of the mortgage market. Um, and particularly also to do with uh, uh, the role of Kenya Mortgage Finance uh, Company, um, understanding that this money is being collected by the government and the government is one of the shareholders uh, for uh, Kenya Mortgage Finance Company, as well as what role do you expect um, financial institution in the country to play? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, where did we start, Ezra? Okay, the mathematics, I'm a mathematics, which one? Okay, both. <laughs> now, um, so 
uh, I just, I've just said, uh, Ezra, uh, that when you start the construction, the houses that we are starting in Starehe will only be complete. The 6,700 will only be complete in three to four years' time. Okay? So the obligation to pay, remember, the offtake model is the investor brings in their money, they build with their own money, then they give us keys, we pay them. And then through Bomayangu, Kenyans are electing and they are saving money. Okay? So that's number one. So in three years' time, this fund will have collected a lot of money. Okay? This fund will have collected a lot of money. But remember, even for where we exit the developer, people start paying. They're not now longer paying 1,000. Remember, the 1,000 is the off-take money, isn't it? Now you start to pay for the tenant purchase. So now you've started to pay 5,000. You started to pay 10,000. You started to pay 15,000. That's one way. Ultimately, what we will do, and I don't want to get technical, I, I really fear that, uh, this. What we shall do, we are using the capital markets to recycle our money through REITs. So if you need more details, come to the but interest rate is silent. And the reason why interest rate is silent is because the minute you give guaranteed interest rate, I don't know where, where you get the guaranteed interest rate, okay? Uh, you create a, an obligation which is almost like a debt. Okay, so even when you join these money markets where you're for unit trust, they don't give you a guaranteed return. Okay, but they keep on reporting and telling you this is how our fund is performing and so on and so forth. I think every month they show you which fund is doing well or not doing well. All right. Okay, that is the similar principle. What we can talk about is what is our target interest rate and we can give you that. Our target interest rate is 7%. Okay, that is our target interest rate. And we can achieve it because this money, 9 billion a month, that I only need to pay in four years' time, is not going to stay in a simple deposit account. We are going to invest it. We are going to invest your money. And please, this is very important because nobody has asked about the fund governance. The fund, and, and, and very important, this money is not GOK money. Please, this is not GOK money. This money will never see the consolidated fund because this is members' money. That's what I told you, please. It's not different from Asako or Chama. So, easy pesa ya serikali because you don't work. So, if you, I deduct you and it goes into that account, what is it doing in serikali? The only thing serikali is doing, first of all, is because I'm the biggest employer. Okay? So, to go up on Dani, we are also the ones that set laws and rules. Okay? For this Chama. But then that money will never see, Hinga will never see that money. Because it is sitting with someone who is called a custodial bank. And that money can never be released at oh, it's not a fuel to subsidize. It will never happen. Because this is not GOK money. Please, this is very, very important. Number two, the people who make the investment decision is not Hinga. We today the fund that is, that is there has a fund manager, Britam. They are the ones who do what is called capital allocation. They decide how much money do we need in long term, how much do we need in the near short term, and how much money do we need next week. And they allocate capital. Number three, there is an independent administrator. That is the person who is going to be giving you your statement. And because you are saving mandatory, and you will also be saving voluntary, because... Soon, once you realize this is good gospel, you will, once you overcome the 2,000 and the 1,000, you'll save more. Now you need to see your statement. In your statement, today we have a farm of actuaries called Zamara. They're the ones who are administering that fund. And the fund is going to have its own governance and the regulations are coming out. Probably in the next two weeks you should be able to see that. I thought that is important because... It, it is uko wanasema oh hiyo pesa itachanganyika watalipa pending bills nayo hawana hiyo iwezi kufanyika na Lawrence Nyando you know you've asked Hussein to 
to answer this question, but before Hussein answers, I know uh, it's, it's, a, it's a topical question. Why prioritize housing? There is unemployment. The reason why we are prioritizing housing is because we need to fix unemployment. You know, as I told you, please, we don't need to be Harvard economist, economist to understand how do you create jobs. You must create a consumptive demand. You know, we talk about manufacturing. Manufacturing doesn't just fall from heaven. You must create a demand for that manufacturing. Otherwise, you're manufacturing for what? If you're doing 200,000 a year, that is 1.2 million doors. That's how you've created a door-making industry. And that door-making industry will hire so many Kenyans. So the question you're asking, prioritize unemployment. And government does not. The government is not the one that employs largely. We know we're the biggest employer. But the best jobs are the ones that are created by the private sector. That door-making factory is going to be done by you, Moranyando. Please, those are the opportunities that we are asking you to see. Uh, I don't know that Hussein wants to add anything on top of that, but I think it's well answered. Amimo, KBC. Uh, yeah, so there is the issue of uh, uh, the statutory deduction and uh, there is s s lack of compliance sometimes in, a, in, in, in government. Um, uh, you know, for example, um, uh, paying rates. You know, we owe each other a lot of money, all right? Okay, and that's why this thing is called a check-off system. Okay, for government, is a check-off system. Okay, it is cut at source. Okay, it will be cut at source. And once it's cut at source, it is sent to the fund. So let me tell you what is the implication. Because we, as the biggest employer, it is going to cost government close to 36 billion. New money that is not in the budget now as we speak if you help us pass this bill that goes into this chama, okay? That money will have to be cut at source as opposed to what your person in the kwako I'll have to answer to collect. You need to check off. Beautiful question about titling. This is, this is really the elef there was an elephant in the room because so many people have built houses they can't get titles. We are working tirelessly and the president himself has committed about sorting out this issue of titling. The digitization is the only way because there is the issue of sanctity of title and how do you transact without having with all the stories that are there. So please support digitization. We have challenges. Some of it is because there are people who benefit from the manga manga business that are resisting it. But also we have got a, a lot of people, um, th there are challenges with the system. We have been given targets by which we are going to meet. Um, National Housing Corporation and is going to administer the tenant purchase scheme. You all agree. They have administered a lot of the tenant purchase scheme. They have got the experience to be able to do that. So there is no conflict between what NHC will do. Graham from Standard. Um, KMRC. KMRC is part of our demand side instrument. Okay? It is helping us with mortgages. All right? Because today, KMRC has a single-digit fixed interest rate. So single-digit means that it is, it is not more than, it is not 10%, it is below 10%. That's the interest rate you're going to get. And it is long-term. So the banks that I was giving you 10 now can give you 20 years. Because Kenyan government has borrowed from the World Bank and Africa Development Bank 40 billion shillings at concessional rates. And we have gone and funded banks. Okay, so that they can then advance that benefit to you. But here is the challenge, or, or the limitation, not the challenge. The limitation of KMRC, and that's why we need the housing fund, so they're, they're doing separate things, is that majority of you can still not be able to walk in the bank and qualify for a mortgage. Mortgage as defined. Because there is an eligibility criteria. In our estimation, majority of Kenyans at 5% for 30 years, now we are talking. And again, majority of Kenyans understand rent. So we are saying we don't want to give Kenyans, to force a mortgage product on Kenyans on day one, okay? But they understand rent. So give them a product they understand, which is the rent, okay? But you tell them, continue paying rent, but you will own. It's much easier to explain. That's what the housing fund does, as opposed to KMRC. 
but it is, plays an important role and it is increasing the mortgages. But the other challenge on, that we are addressing with the housing fund that complements KMRC is the housing fund is an offtake fund. Therefore, the offtake fund, it means that the houses need to be built first. So even if we have got that single digit long term mortgage at KMRC, if there are no units that are coming up that are affordable, what is going to happen? The money is just staying there. Sindio. So we need to create supply. The housing fund tells the developer, you build, use your money, you finish, I give you, key, you, give, you, you give me keys, I pay you. When we get this pool of houses that come in, KMRC now will come and compete and say, you have got 10,000 units that you have malizard, and I have got 10,000, 5,000 clients who want a mortgage. Now the supply addresses KMRC's challenge. Make sense? Thank you. And the last part is about the financiers. You know, financiers are our partners. And actually, one of the things that is being said out there is that uh, we, are, we are messing up with the private sector. We allow the private sector. I think today I have been able to demonstrate to you that the private sector solution without government intervention is, it means we only address for 3% of the country. That is the, the truth. So, banks are going to be the biggest beneficiaries of this plan. Why? They're going to be the biggest beneficiaries because now they can finance construction finance. They can focus on construction finance because banks, remember, when you take a project, what's the first thing they assess? Risk, isn't it? The biggest risk is payment. Am I going to get paid if I give you one billion to build units? Utanilipa. That's why they say build 30% kwanza ukuju nikupatia kipasa kidogo ni kama dawa na mnayo na mnayo na mnayo. Sasa, if from July we have 9 billion, na wewe ni developer, uende kwa bank, uambie, by the way, I have been given a contract, kuenda kujenga pale kehancha in Migori, a thousand units. Ini ya boma yangu, certify is correct, eh, Na iko off-take plan, eh, ndio hii off-take certificate. Wananiambia ni build, as long as I stick to the rules, watanilipa in uh, next, next year, June. What do you think the bank is going to do? It will advance you the money today for you to go build at scale and faster. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much and God bless you. <laughs> and uh, please walk with us on this journey. And, and by the way, and for whatever you do, please, because you're mainstream media, we are always available. If, and call us out, please. We're not saying don't call us out. If you don't understand, please do the same thing. Lakini tafadali, don't be peddlers of fake news. Na wale jamao wengine mkuwa hitho huko pia muna balance kidogo. Kwa sababu, wanatuchapa huko then, ila kazi ngumu tunajaribu. And because this is for the good of the country. All right? Asante ni sana, God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, P.S. Um... I think that question was answered, uh, Lawrence, by the PS twice, that uh, this how, actually the story about housing is beyond the units or owning the, the homes. It's about a deliberate decision by the president to intervene uh, in creation of employment. How many, uh, I, just, I just read some statistics for you, three to five direct jobs, about eight indirect jobs for every housing unit that is going to be uh, done. Again, we are linking our MSMEs. Uh, so many of these inputs will be ring fenced for Juakali, local Juakali uh, artisans. If we are going, I mean, uh, as the PS said, there'll be the program for taking 200 units per constituency. We expect the inputs to be made by MSMEs or Juakali artisans in that constituency. We are working via PPP, okay? Again. Uh, the bigger projects will be via PPP, that is foreign direct investment. And that is why initially I had said, this is all interlinked. And the president campaigned based on a manifesto that is still alive and you can read. And the people voted on the president based on the manifesto. The manifesto itself was a product of a year or more, I think, of the economic forums. You remember them? We, the, when the president used to go around the country and talk to people and listen to them. You have seen products of those uh, uh, economic forums and what he was told. There was a big problem with Shylocks. You remember during the campaigns? What did the president do after? So that you understand that this, these are not things that are coming out of the blue. This is coming from the people. These are the people needs that the president is trying to address. 
We have the Hustler Fund. He launched it within 100 days, okay, to sort out that problem. We are now talking about a housing, uh, a housing problem in the country and how we'll create jobs, create incomes, and uh, even for our TVET uh, institutions. And the TVET graduates will have ready jobs waiting for them at PS. And they actually integrated in this program, uh, the housing uh, program. And that is why I said our priorities, because you talked about why housing as a priority. When I started, I said we have five priorities where we want to intervene for Kenyans. Cost of living, uh, creating jobs, improving revenues, enhancing our foreign exchange, and uh, uh, inclusive growth. Look at which will be delivered by five pillars. Agriculture and agribusiness, MSMEs, uh, development, housing and settlement, uh, digital superhighway, digital economy, and UHC. All our interventions and what we are doing are actually going to address those priorities. From all that the PS has said here in housing, we are creating employment. That is priority taken care of in terms of uh, jobs. Another priority we are saying we'll do, we'll improve foreign exchange, FDIs, through the PPP. Another thing we are saying is um, enterprises for MSMEs. All those is part of the priorities, and all these key five key pillars uh, that the president uh, is going, uh, of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda are going to address these priorities. About health, the president will uh, soon launch uh, the product universal healthcare uh, coverage. Uh, it will be a huge, actually, be a paradigm shift on how healthcare uh, is being delivered in the country, with specific, much emphasis on primary healthcare. But we we'll leave that to the president. Uh, to, to, to announce uh, soon. Jane Gwain will get you these details, but very quickly, we talked about 36,092 units that the President has launched. You'll be seeing him going around uh, launching these housing units. Mukuru, 13,076. Kibira Soetobi, 4,054. Mavoko, affordable housing project, 5,360. Saraya, affordable housing project, 6,704. Shaurimoyo A, affordable housing project, 3,848. Ruiru affordable housing, 1,050 units. Homa Bay affordable, affordable housing project, 2,000 units. There are more coming, and the PS is working closely, of course, with the president of this. Makongeni will soon be launched, and Thika. And we'll share all these uh, details with you. So finally, I just want to uh, say one more thing. Of course, we will keep engaging you on this matter of housing and the other key uh, pillars of our agenda. Finally, as you may already be aware, the National Holidays Awareness Programs now take place a week. Uh, before the national holiday itself. So the commemoration of the Madaraka Day will be held in Embu on June 1st, 2023, that is next week, you're all aware, with the overarching theme being MSMEs, cooperatives, trade, and revenue. The sub-theme for the event will focus on empowering enterprises, and on Friday, uh, 26 June, that is the day after tomorrow, President Ruto will launch the Citizen Engagement Program by inaugurating a week-long expo which will bring together 350 exhibitors. Uh, representing MSMEs, cooperatives, as well as trade and revenue sectors in Embo County. And we hopefully will see you there. Thank you so much for your participation, for all your questions. We hope this will now be reported with accuracy and will be engaging you more and more about our key pillars. Asante Thank you.